folks. I know it's been a while. Boy, have I been busy fishing every single day, putting in 12-hour days. I haven't been doing any editing and no videoing. But what I'll do is in the bottom of this video, in the, in the video description, I will put my blog post, my fishing report blog post. I just call it report blog. And I'll put a link and it shows everything that we did this week. Minimal pictures, not a lot. Video is always better. But as I do after a big, long run of charters, the boat is filthy. And I give it the squirt, squirt with the old uh, Simpsons Honda powered power boost pump system pressure washer. If you stick with me, Till the end of this video, while I'm going to save you all the boringness of cleaning the boat, because I did a video about that before asking, how do you clean your boat with like a scrub brush, soap and stuff? <laughs> this is how I clean mine other than just giving it a spritz afterwards. Uh, I'll tell you about some tackle that I'm just going to follow up on. I've been accused of not following up on anything so I'm gonna follow up on some tackle because I finally hooked and caught some really nice fish while I was on charters helping out my customers put more fish in the box so stay tuned I'm gonna do the boat inside I'm gonna do my top I'm gonna to do uh, all my aluminum top bars and supports and all that good stuff and uh, I'll be right back all righty folks woo I'm done I'm done cleaning the boat with the power washer you could eat wet scrambled eggs off of my deck pick a spot on my boat I'll do it I'm serious I'll do it I'll eat wet scrambled eggs off my deck I wanted just to follow up because I get accused by non-subscriber idiots out there that I don't follow up. But let me tell you how in love I am now with that. I have used this now. How long have I had these Daiwa beef sticks? I've had them... Um, what a month yeah I know some people you know they need a trigger I don't know why you need a trigger you think the rods gonna come flying out of your hand or something I don't need a trigger I hold it just like that what's what's the difference of me putting my finger in, back here back here I choke up like that anyhow okay there's my uh, seven to f seven point four to one gear ratio Daiwa Ryoga jigging as I said before this is a half to two ounce, handles four ounces, absolutely no problem. Line weight, 10 to 20 pound, 10 to 20 pounds, seven foot length, BSS701MB. I'll put all the information in the description below, but I finally caught some decent fish on this. We did some serious drum fishing. We did some serious uh, sheep's head fishing over the past uh, Thanksgiving week here to help my customers out many times, you know. I gotta help them out. I always uh, try to be an extra rod in the water. And caught drum, eight pounds, sheep's head, maybe four. So that was sort of the bigger fish that I've caught on this. And I will say, I wouldn't hesitate I would not hesitate for $47. Now, if the price goes up, I would not hesitate in a million years here that if for some reason I can't get no ugly sticks, if for some reason, and it's like I can't um, because I'm going to order them on the Select Angler Guide Program, which, you know, I can't even log in anymore. I, I can't even log into their site I guess, I'll, I guess that's how they just flush us out, right? 
all of us ambassadors of you uh, on YouTube for Ugly Stick, they don't even seem to care. You know, um, I guess they had such issues during the summer here, I guess, with the woo flu. All I can think, this is what the first thing that comes to mind for me, is Ugly Stick is built in the Wuhan province of China, along with all the other rods that Pure Fishing makes. You know, Penn, Berkeley, uh, Ugly Stick. It's just a giant conglomerate. I really hate to sort of part ties with Ugly Stick, but um, I buy rods, you know, four at a time, five at a time, six at a time. In all reality, you know, I am a Daiwa fan, and these are a cheap rod. I'm not saying these are inexpensive rods. It's a cheap rod with some very nice components. I spread out some straw on my yard, and I did it because I found two giant bales in plastic bags at the dumpster at the boat ramp at 5.30 in the morning. When I was throwing something in the dumpster, I was like, what are these dead bodies? Big giant plastic bags. Well, it was kind of dark <coughs> and I felt it and kind of looked at it. I didn't, I should have pulled out my flashlight. I thought it was pine straw. Huge bales of pine straw in plastic bags. Somebody threw them in the dumpster. So uh, my nose is like major itchy because it turned out it wasn't pine straw. It was just plain straw. And then I look down in there and I see pumpkins and gourds. So somebody used it as a display or something and they couldn't get rid of it. So they take it to the boat ramp and dump it in the dumpster down there for the city to worry about. Well, these things were wrapped up in these giant black plastic bags. Man, I hoofed, I snatched them things out of the dumpster and hoofed them over to my truck and threw them in the bed because I thought they were pine straw because that's how I actually did my yard. You know, I killed all my grass, all my weeds, all my vines, all the crap that grows out here in the woods. And, um... I laid pine straw and then all the leaves, of course, over the years laid on the pine straw. Some of the pine straw is still there in my yard, but in uh, the whole backyard, I spread a bale of plain straw and then a portion of the front yard. So it'll just go down and beat, get beat down and keep the, and then the leaves will get on top of it. It's just like I mulch my yard because when it's 110 degrees in the damn shade, and I backed this boat in, in July and August, I used to look over at my yard and go, good God, now I gotta cut the grass, or cut the weeds, or cut the dirt, as me and my neighbor next door always talk about. So, um, I did that prior to pressure washing the boat, so now, oh, now my nose is all itchy. But, either way, I don't know if maybe I would use this with customers, this light of a rod, because I like light, but I can get these and bump them up, bump them up to a little, you know, this is, I don't even know, they don't even give it a rating rating. Um, they don't say medium, medium heavy or anything like that, but I could bump these up if I needed to. So Daiwa beef stick. I don't know if it's as strong as an ugly stick, but it's certainly priced right for the charter guy or the guy who doesn't want to spend a lot. So you can check those out. So that's a follow-up. I finally caught fish on this rod because I don't get to use them all the time. You know, I don't get to use, I'm, I'm attending to people that need everything in the world. They need a shrimp, they need a hook, they need a sinker, they need a this, they need, they're, you know, things are happening on the boat between two, three, four people. So the other follow-up is from my last video. When I pinched off all the heads to jumbo shrimp and large shrimp and bagged them up and froze them. Well, I'll tell you, two days out of this past week, I had enough that I, 
I saved those heads and I just put them in my chum chopper. You could have just put them in a mesh bag. I don't know. I, I, I'm, a, I'm fortunate enough that I've got something to pulverize almost anything in the back of my boat. I'll show it to you at the end of this video. I got it built right in to my, my boat swim platform in the back. But um, I saved all those heads and I didn't even mash them. I took the frozen heads, stuck them down in there. And all I did was press down to break apart, break them apart a little bit. And we were instantly, instantly into sheep's head. That works. And it just so happens to be great chum because I'm buying big loads of large shrimp. And I like, as I showed in my last video, that all the links will be below where I pinch the heads and I save them and I take the heads off and I individually quick freeze these shrimp in silicone or silicone. I always say that word wrong. Silicone bags that I buy and I lay them flat and I keep them frozen all day in a separate bait cooler. So, you know, the old saying is good bait ain't cheap and cheap bait ain't no good. So I just want somebody to be able to grab a shrimp, not some old nasty twisted up, half rotten, you know, because the head is what's going to make the shrimp go bad. The juices in the head and everything. But those same juices, when they hit that water, we were instantly into sheep's head. It was, it was, in my opinion, as good as scrape and pilings or anything like that. So as soon as that shrimp just smell got in the water, the fish just turned on. Let me show you my chum chopper in case you never saw it. All right, here's my chum chopper. It's got all these holes, holes in the bottom. There's my trim tab, so I couldn't go any further. What I did is I bought an eight inch tube, eight inch tube made out of heavy duty aluminum. I took it to the local T-top place and I had them put this bead around and drill it and take that, when they cut this hole in here, take that piece of aluminum, weld it to the bottom. So, um, and I was lucky enough, there you go. I was lucky enough to not have to get a chopper built. Okay, I had this from a Dennis Braid chum mate that I had bolted on the back of my old boat. So this isn't my first go round with a chum chopper. What you do is you put all your chum, whatever, and then this mashes it. And I stand right there in the boat and I mash it. And then I just put this here just to hold it. So all that stuff filters out of those holes. I'll even tell you what I did one time offshore. I had a whole bunch of chicken thighs, drumsticks and wings and breasts and stuff like that. That got freezer burnt or in a, and something, ha something happened to them. It was either freezer burnt or I can't remember big packs of them it was kind of real waste i took the i took those and put him put them in here one time and we were offshore on a reef anchored up and we were tearing up the damn sea bass i mean big sea bass and i was mashing the chicken in here and the sea bass we were catching were coming up off the bottom and we only had to drop down we were in probably 65 foot of water. We only had to drop down about halfway. And we were catching these big, giant, greenhead sea bass. And when we got them in the boat, they were throwing up chicken skin and chicken bones. So they were eating it. And that's what got them going. That's what got them going. Most of the time, I'll put a, uh, a uh, half a five gallon uh, bucket of pogies in here. But basically, basically anything works in here. And this is where I put the shrimp heads. 
And I'm telling you, the smell that was pouring out behind the boat was phenomenal. So um, I also keep my dispatcher. This is called the dispatcher. You know, I put my sheep's head and things like that pretty much in a fish bag anymore. And uh, this goes between their cranium. Boom, and this whacks them over the head so I don't want them flopping around in my fish bag. I came up with a new idea. This may help you out too. And I literally, I keep this right here. And if I need it, I put it up in the boat and whack them sheep's head. I don't want them stabbing, the, you know, and puncturing my fish bag. So let me show you my newest idea. This may help somebody out. This may help you out. I don't know. It's just little ideas and things I try to pass on to my viewers and subscribers. All right. So this is what I've been doing here. This is my mini fish chiller bag from Australia. And I really like it because it's a fish bag that doesn't lay flat. It's triangular shaped. See, it's actually got a base on it and it'll stand up. It'll literally stand up. But what I'm doing is I'm hanging it from this pole here and hanging it from my fender eye that's here. And I can just unzip it and throw my ice and fish in there. Just right there. And I can unzip it. All right. So it kind of keeps it out of the way. And then at the end of the day, all I do is unclip it and I drag it back here to the back of the boat. And then of course I clean my fish right here. Lately, I've been using my Makita reciprocating saw with my Flazol blades in it. And one day we were cleaning, I don't know, 12, let's see, I think it was 12 sheep's head and a freshwater catfish and a speckled trout, a nice speckled trout, a real, a real nice one that we caught when we just did a quick uh, float rig. And um, I'm using that to clean sheep's head and all the drum we've been catching. We caught a, we caught some, what? three, four drum yesterday and two, three sheep said we only kept one of the larger sheep said, but I was at the fish cleaning table at the boat ramp. And here's the guys with a whole bunch of small sheep said, you know, just barely legal. And I pull out my fillets all. What? What's this? Big old noisy truck. I pulled out my fillets all and go, mm, 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 and take the sides off them sheep's head so fast. And the guy on the other side, it's a double, there's a, there's, it's under a roof and there's a fillet table here. And then there's a fillet table on the other side. And the guys on the other side, they're cleaning all these little sheep's head. <laughs> he turns to his buddy and says, looks like we're doing it all wrong. Yeah, you are. He doesn't know that I clean a hundred sheep set at the El Cheapo sheep set tournament with my fillets all blade and my Makita faster than anybody can clean them with a knife. Since I just mentioned it, let me show it to you. All right, here's my fillets all box. I got this box. Here I keep my blades in a Dexter Russell seven inch sheath. And here's my Makita. I took the guard off the front. But let me uh, attach the camera here. All right, this is a Makita. You can't really use any other one. You either want a Makita or one that's shaped exactly like this that you can get at Lowe's. It's called a Cobelt, I believe. I take the guard off the front by simply just un unhooking it. it goes in here and it's just a metal guard but lithium-ion batteries 
snap in. There you go. And you hold it like this. It's got a safety. And this, this is how I clean sheep's head and drum. And I clean, I don't know how many. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, it could be 100, okay, at the uh, El Cheapo Sheep's Head Tournament, which is the largest sheep's head tournament, I believe, in the entire world that my club puts on and is the major sponsor for. Well, in here I got various serrated Dexter Russell blades. That's what these actually are. These are Dexter Russell blades. And the whole thing about fillets all blades, this is even one called the freshwater blade. It's thin and super bendy for, for smaller fish. I believe Eddie Watford up in, is that South Carolina or North Carolina? I'm sorry, Eddie, I always forget. Lake Westmoreland, he cleans stripers like this every day every day when he's fishing because they catch them stripers up there like it's fishing in a in a goddamn fish barrel so they call this the freshwater blade and these i believe are the seven inch just regular regular blades but the key is that milled end and you put it in make sure <laughs> the other day i cleaned a fish and it wasn't locked in all the way and then you grip it up here and it's sort of balanced and it takes a little bit of getting used to but I flip this back I've got videos of me cleaning fish with this and let me tell you something it's unbelievable and this is what the guys were saying on the other side of the fish cleaning table when they said we must be doing it wrong well yeah you were because in my business, I want the fish clean fast and efficient because I just got done fishing all day, right? And yeah, I throw in fish cleaning as part of the charter fee, but oops, I want to get it done and I want to move on. These are the blades. It says fillets all right there. I'll put a link below. You can also find them in, on Amazon if sometimes they're available, but I will just send you, I'll put a link. It's just filletsall.com with a Z. So F-I-L-L-E-T-Z-A-L-L. -L -L -L. There you go. That is it. That's how I clean sheep's head and black drum and redfish and any other difficult to clean fish. So, there's just a few hints. I haven't done a video in a while, so I wanted to let you know what has been going on and just to follow up. So, thanks for watching, and hopefully the next one will be fishing. And I'll put my report with all the photographs of the ones that I took of this past week and uh, a link to my last video about the shrimp heads and the links to Filetzal. So there you go. One stop shopping for a whole bunch of information here at Captain Day Sport Fishing YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you think I gave you any kind of little help because that's what we're here to do is help you out even if it ain't just showing one fish after another. Just fishing, fishing, fishing. There's a lot more to fishing than just that. All right. So take care.